The original special permit. <coughs> you ready? Right now? Okay. All right, we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna call to order our uh, seven thirty hearing of the Board of Appeals. This is on the application of of Jason Santatellis. This is a continued hearing from an earlier scheduled hearing on. Um, March 13, we had postponed that from March 13 to March 19, and we continued the hearing on March 19th to today, which is April 25, 2018. My name is Jeffrey Mullen. I'll be acting as a chairman tonight. And with me is uh, Nicholas Gray to my left and Virginia Donahue King to my right, both board members. Uh, this is on the application of Jason Sanatellis, dated January 24, 2018, on file with the board for an amendment and renewal of special permit number 2420 that was issued by the board on December 29, 2014. The applicant would like to amend condition number one, which states that there will be, be no more, there will not be more than two deliveries of mulch to the premises during any week, Monday through Saturday, and no single delivery in excess of 80 yards of mulch may be made. The proposed amendment provides that shall be no deliveries of mulch to the premises before 10 o'clock a.m or later than 4 p.m. and three deliveries shall be allowed per week with no single delivery of mulch in excess of 80 yards. The property is located in a residence B zoning district at 1126 to 1146 Randolph Avenue and is operated as a business known as Eagle Farms on property owned by Santa Talis Randolph Ave Trust. All is set forth in the application and open to public inspection. I have in the application letter submitted by Mr. Sanitellis. I have the 2014 special permit, uh, a list of the um, abutters, <coughs> approval to extend, a, a letter from Maggie Oldfield uh, from Thea Nursery. I see she's here tonight as well, that she, uh, she read portions of it at the, at the last hearing. I won't I won't read it again. It is already largely in the record. I believe that Ms. Oldfield's, uh, the, the tenor of this letter is uh, uh, requesting that uh, Mr. Sanitellis and Eagle Farms be subjected to the review under the bylaw, the special bylaw passed by town meeting and made a part of our bylaw regarding landscape businesses. So uh, we have that in the record. Uh, we continued the hearing till tonight to deal with that issue and others that were raised in the hearing. Mr. Sanitellis, welcome to the Board of Appeals. How may we help you? Thank you for having me. You're welcome. As you said, this was a continuation of uh, March, March 18th's uh, hearing. Um, I came in and saw Mrs. Fitzgerald and, and Mr. Prondike um, to renew my special permit. And in doing so, um, asking for two changes on the common permit. Section I, this time we're allowed uh, two deliveries of mulch per week, Monday through Saturday. Um, asking if there's a possibility we could bump that up to three loads of mulch per week. Um, our business is heavily affected with the weather. Um, this doesn't mean that every week we will be accepting three loads of mulch. Um, this is just permission to accept it if needed. Um, as you've noticed, we've had a tough um, early spring with all the rain, and bringing mulch to, to houses has been um, standstill because of that. So I'm thinking that as soon as the weather breaks, there's going to be times where we're going to be running out of mulch with the two, yeah, two loads per week. The second item I would look into adjust is in that same um, section I. Uh, right now, the deliveries can't be made till before 10:30 a.m. I'm just looking 
to see if we could change that to 10 a.m. And that's on a request from the truck drivers um, because what they try to do is come down with a load of mulch and deliver it, and then they try to pick up a load of either logs or, or chips to haul back. Um, and that half hour would help them to reach their uh, second destination. <coughs> And I believe that is it. it. So t how's it going now? What's happening up there? What's the level of, of complaints you've received from your neighbors, adjacent property owners, traffic concerns on Randolph Avenue? Can you just give us an idea of the general condition of the premises yeah. and how business has been since, um, I'm not interested in how much, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm not as interested in the receipts and the cash register sure. as much as I'm sure. interested in the operation of the business? The, the I think um, since the last time we met it was in 2014. Um, from 2014 on, I thought uh, things were, were going very well with the neighbors. Uh, we're very sensitive to what we need to do to keep them happy. Um, we did some um, evergreen screening. We added some um, irrigation systems. Um, I'm a phone call away, and as I talked to Mr. Prondike about it, it's been very quiet on uh, the complaint side. Uh, on March 18th, Mr. Martinelli um, was here um, speaking about the mulch. Um, as far as traffic, <coughs> I think it's about the same. Um, it's a major highway. Uh, Route 28 is a cut through for many different towns, for the expressway to Boston. Um, but as far as Eagle Farms causing any uh, traffic jams or accidents, it's been very quiet. How many deliveries are made on Saturday? Um, depending on the month, month of May on a Saturday, we could do um, up to seven, seven deliveries. No, oh, you're only getting two. You're only getting two a week. Two deliveries to me. You're asking how many how deliveries? How many are deliveries to you? We only get two a week right now. How many deliveries to you a week on Saturday? None. We don't receive deliveries of mulch on Saturday. It's usually been Monday through Friday. So the permit permits you to, my per question is the permit permits you to get the mulch Monday through Saturday. Saturday. Correct. Is, would, would, if you don't get, if you don't get mulch on, what, one of Mr. Martinelli's concerns was about noise. Sure. From the mulch and his other, you know, and you're asking for another truck. Sure. And his point was it's, it's, while it's one truck delivering, it's a lot of trucks going out. Uh, I'm just probing to see whether or not it would be less of an impact to limit the deliveries to during the, the work week rather than on the weekend, which is what you're currently permitted to do. You see what I'm saying? Change Monday to Saturday to Monday to Friday. I, mean, I don't know. I'm probing to see sure. that would be less impactful, it seems to me, on the neighboring property while also accomplishing your business objective. Sure. So yeah. I'm not, I don't want to negotiate with you right now. I want to just see. <laughs> no, I want to I, understand, I understand a little bit saying. about what's sure. happening out there. You know, there there hasn't, as I recall, there hasn't been a time that we received or needed a load of mulch on a Saturday. Okay. Usually, those truck drivers um, don't want to work on a, on a Saturday. Who does? Right. Right. <laughs> Except Nick and Jenny and me. Um, right. Okay. Um, so we're smarter than we were in 2014. As I recall, in 2014, we spent a good part of that year, in fact, going to your property, talking to your neighbors, really trying to, <laughs> to get draft a, a special sure. permit. To, and, you know, this is a little bit of a checkup, right? You're asking for an extension. So I want to I wanna be smarter than we were then. You are, and, and hopefully we are as well. So. <laughs> See, the Building Commission has joined us. Mr. Prondack, would you like to, we're talking about Eagle Farms. Would you like to sit at the table? If you'd like me to. You're move welcome to. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, so, okay. Um, I think, you know, going back to 2014 and, and the site visits and with Joe's input 
and, and speaking with the neighbors and, and coming up with, uh, you know, sections A through, <coughs> through R, um, I think it was, it was great. Okay. It, it worked for us. It worked for the neighbors. Oh, I'm, I just want to be respectful of sure, what Mr. Martinelli's yes, representation absolutely. has been. Okay. Like I said, we're very sensitive. You know, okay. I'm a phone call away. If there's something that needs to be done, I'm willing to do it. Um, you know. uh, Ms. Mrs. King, do you have any questions of, of the applicant? No, I don't. <clears throat> no. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brodek, just to, just to catch you up, and I know you've been involved in this. <coughs> um, we've been, uh, the, the applicant is asking for a... Um, for a modification of the, uh, for an extension of the permit and a, a modification of the permit to increase the deliveries of mulch from two per month to three per month. Per but, week. Per I'm week. sorry, two, two per week to three per week, but no more than 80 yards at any one time. Correct. Right. Um, and we talked a little bit about traffic on Randolph Avenue, which I know is a continual concern. He's also asking for the time of delivery to be um, to be modified from 10, 1030. 1030 to 10. Um, let me ask you, we talked last time about the term, and this term, this term expired at the end of the year. It was four years? Ten. When the it was original granted. permit <clears throat> was from 2008, was a 10 year. Um, 2008. With a 10 year expiration date. Yeah. In consideration, if, if there were any issues or complaints, I would have to come in back in front of the board to hear. So, your request on the term is an additional 10 years? Yes. Uh, Mr. Prodak, do you, do you have any comments on any of that? Or any, any thoughts that you want to share with the, with the, with the board? Well, no, I, I think it's important to point out um, um, on the last, the last time we were here, we were here as a result of a number of complaints about um, uh, mulch and noise and, and things of that nature, and, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but... but well, last time was, last time, a month ago, or last, well, last time, four time years ago? Four, four years ago. Uh, I remember all these times so well, I just, I just want you to... And since the implementation of that newer special permit, we had only one complaint last year about an off-hour delivery, as opposed to prior to that, when we had a number of complaints. So I think... I think um, things have been working well on this particular site um, up to date, and that's that's what I can add to the to the mix. Okay. Um, let me also uh, let me ask. Uh, any further? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any further questions? Is there anybody uh, in the audience who'd like to speak on this application in support of the application? I'm yes, sir. Well, welcome to the Board of Appeals. This, uh, uh, state your name and your address and, and uh, speak into the microphone so they can record you. Phil Joe Henning, 23 Parkwood Drive. Welcome. I, I uh, read um, in the paper about uh, Maggie's comment, um, and it, it appears to me that, uh, that uh, a nursery, a landscaping business, has the right to apply um, for a special permit with the planning board, but they're not required to do that. And I, that's the only point I wanted to make. Uh, if they meet certain conditions, they have the right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak in support of the application? Anybody like to speak in opposition to the application? Mrs. Oldfield. Ms. Oldfield. Name and address for the... Maggie Oldfield, 237 Hillside Street. I'm not really ready right now to speak, but I just want to reserve m my right to speak because I'd like first for you guys to answer my questions that I had asked last time. So I might have some follow-up questions depending on what you had to say. Uh, we be I believe uh, that we're not conducting a landscape business here as defined by the bylaw. This is a nursery. This is He is conducting a business selling uh, selling. Uh, fruits and vegetables and flowers and shrubs, but he's not operating to construct, install, or maintain laws, lawns, trees, yards, <clears throat> shrubs, gardens, patios, and related products. He does have a landscaping business across the street, or there are landscaping activities across the street, and those were dealt with in a separate application. That I actually didn't hear um, 
These are some other issues uh, related to um, uh, the Copeland Trust. So I think this property is not, a land, not, it's not conducting landscaping business on this property. Okay, so then my question is, um, how come the Zoning Board of Appeals determined in my case that selling mulch was not allowed at nurseries and it was considered a landscaping yeah. activity? This is, on, this is on Eagle Farms. It's not on Thayer Nursery. We can deal with Thayer Nursery when we get to Thayer Nursery. So we're, we're just dealing with, Thayer, with, with um, Eagle Farms on this. Yeah. Well, I understand that, but I feel mm -hmm. like what we are dealing with is um, the decision <coughs> by the court, and I don't think... The Leiden that, case. Correct. Mm -hmm. And they determined, the court determined, because of what Joe had to say, that, that mulch was considered landscaping. So even Miss Donahue King sat on my board, and she voted for, to to take away my ability to sell mulch and loam and compost. So I'm just wondering how come, when I'm a true farm, I meet the statutory requirement of a farm, and all those products come under a farm, how come I'm not allowed to sell it? I don't, I don't, I don't want to speak to the specific facts and circumstances of Thayer Nursery as compared to Eagle Farms. We're trying to deal with Eagle Farms on the merits. And we've made, a, at least I've made a judgment in consultation with the building commissioner, and we should debate it that we're not conducting a landscaping business, which was the point. I don't know what else to say to you. I mean, certainly have the right to contest that, object to that, speak to that, but that, that's, that's where we are right now. So, Joe, do you think that... This is not really a conversation between you and the building commissioner. We're having a hearing about Eagle Farms. So if you want to address your question to me, I'll address it to the commissioner. But I'm just frustrated that I feel like you're not really answering the question. In the way that I understand it, if, if Eagle Farm was conducting a landscaping business across the street, has he supplied a list of equipment to the building department like we had to do about our equipment? Ooh. And so what had to happen was Joe did not allow my Thayer Nursery trucks to come on my property unless I submitted a list of landscaping vehicles. And so I'm wondering if Eagle Farm has done that. I don't know the, I don't know the circumstances regarding the Copeland property uh, uh, application, but that's not what we're hearing tonight right. either. Correct. Um, and in terms of what's been submitted or not, I don't know. We know what's in your special permit because we've, been, we've had several hearings about that, and I know that it does require that. But we don't know anything about any other case right now. We're trying to take testimony on this facts and specific circumstances regarding Eagle Farms. I know, but I don't think Fair enough. you're doing a very good job. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I'm wondering also, um, um, so their site is much smaller than our site. So we have about nine acres at my site. And so we are very well protected um, from my neighbors. So I'm just wondering how your thought process is coming up on setbacks. We had uh, you know, several hearings in 2014, site visits, numerous conversations. We've designed a special permit that the testimony at this hearing appears to me to seem to be working for the people in that location. And it's the type of thing where each matter has to be taken up individually with respect, with respect to what's happening in that location. It's what, the things that are happening at Eagle Farm seem to be working as evidenced by the testimony of the commissioner and, the, in fact, frankly, the testimony of the, the abutters. Mr. Martinelli was here at the last hearing that you attended and said that with the exception of uh, his concerns about mulch, he thought it was working quite well. So that's all I can say to that. So my other question is just moving forward, and it's a general question. When the board makes a determination and puts like definitive language, is that definitive language then carried out and can be applied to other permits? I don't know what you mean by definitive so, language. So. so for instance, in the Eagle Farm permit, I believe it says they define certain products as agricultural. Um, so if there's a definition of agricultural products 
in his permit? Can, is that now the normal definition um, that the town I'm, I'm not going to make a blanket statement about that without really reviewing the specifics. I don't know the answer. Because it's probably in the, um, the permit. So I've asked um, Joe Prodak that question, and he hasn't responded to me yet. Okay. So I just think that you're doing a disservice to all of us if you're not comparing apples to apples. And I just want to make sure that any landscaping um, that is going on at Eagle Farm is not then happening at their nursery site because we were under severe scrutiny for that by Joe. And we had to give a list of all of our um, equipment and all of our activities. So I just want to make sure that selective enforcement practices are not happening. So noted. Thank you. Anybody else uh, wish to be heard uh, in uh, opposition to the special permit application? <clears throat> Hearing none. Um, any, any further questions by members of the board? No. Mr. Commissioner, have anything you want to say about the land? Do you want to just share your view of the landscaping business and uh, Eagle Farms? The, the for the record. Business, the landscaping business that Eagle Farms operates operates across the street under a special permit of a pre existing non conforming building, which is substantially different from properties that have received special permits from this board for nursery operations. <clears throat> what about Eagle Farms itself on this side of Randolph Avenue? It's my understanding that it is a, it is a uh, nursery business, yeah. and the question to mulch, I think, in order to answer that, I would have to go back and review the for the nursery case in its entirety. Yeah. That's the right answer. That's a complicated case. Okay. We, I just want to make sure that Ms. Oldfield knows that we're be, being responsive, but these are, these are different matters, and they, they rest on, on, on the particular facts. Okay. So we've heard we've heard testimony on the on the application. Um, we've heard uh, um, some opposition uh, uh, um, on the application. Are we prepared to close the hearing and debate the merits. Okay. So let me close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and debate the merits of the application in accordance with the open meeting law. Ms. King. I see the two different um, landscaping businesses as. Uh, as totally different as Mr. Prondack was saying, they are across the street from um, uh, Jason's nursery business. We're talking about the nursery business right now. Um, he's been a very responsive um, businessman in the neighborhood, having a, um, a commercial business in the neighborhood and his, his um, neighbors did attest to that last time. Even Joe Martinelli was, was um, testifying to that as well. So I give it, I, I would say, oh, you know, what we didn't talk about is um, the hours and the, and the deliveries. I don't see that that, that was not something that was um, complained about by the, um, the neighbors at the last hearing. Um, so I see no reason not to have um, <coughs> deliveries Monday through Friday. We could cut out the Saturday. Um, and 1030, uh, I think, I think, 10 o'clock is, is a reasonable um, is a reasonable request from 10:30, given um, the logistics of the truckers and all. That could actually make less traffic in Milton if that were agreed upon, rather than making two trips, they can make one. So I would be um, in favor of um, of granting the special permit. I, I would as well, for the reasons that you state. I think it's it, that the. <coughs> The testimony has been and is that the work we did four years ago on the special permit has paid off and that it's, things have been going fairly well thanks to your, your efforts. Um, really only one, one complaint in the last year. And I, you know, the bumping it from two to three loads of mulch seems fairly um, benign, I guess. And I don't have any objection raising moving the time from 10.30 to 10. Um, was there also one element of making the permit 10 years instead of? Well, was, testimony was that it was 10 years. Well, yeah. What we did in 2014 was well, there were a series of, a series of complaints that, that where there was an enforcement order, and we picked it up in year six, so there were four more years left. So the request is to 
actually renew this application for an additional 10 year period, I think that's the most efficient way to say it. Is that, is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I, 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 let me uh, echo what my colleagues are saying. I, 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 I remember this hearing well, and, and it, we spent a lot of time on it. And uh, I first want to say um, uh, congratulations to you and to the Building Commissioner for working this out. I want to also acknowledge Mr. Martinelli's continued um, participation in this process. And I remind you that uh, while this permit, well, I'm going to vote to support this permit as well, it is subject to review by the Board of Appeals at any time, including rescinding to the extent that these conditions are, uh, are not adhered to because, after all, it is in a residential district, and I know you know that. So um, with all that, and I, I, I agree with uh, the words of my colleagues, I, I'll, I'm going to vote to uh, support the extension of the permit for an additional 10-year period um, with the modified time, the additional ability to deliver mulch, and the removal of the ability for you to receive mulch on Saturday. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, congratulations, Mr. Sanitellis. We work with Mrs. Fitzgerald on, on actually getting the text of the special permit. It'll be, um, it'll be a little, little time and, and um, you can go from there, okay? Thank you. Good luck to you. Appreciate you. You're time. welcome. Thank you. Let me do this. I'll do it if you want. You want to do it? I'll do it. It's fine. <coughs> I live, live for we it. We have two minutes. It's 8 o'clock, okay? Well, we're, we're running a tight ship here, Commissioner. Virginia <laughs> King would be happy. We'd be proud of you. Oh, I'm very proud of away. You. This thing runs like a top. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I think he's probably at home watching this. Okay, do, do I have, um, okay. Mr. Johanny, well just, just uh, give us till two minutes, okay? Or wait till eight. I'm not gonna start, I'm just sitting. No, okay, no, I appreciate that. Just. Like it's that. fun. It's actually fun. I know. Even it's in the rain, huh? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> How'd you get the flat? I don't know. I probably hit a pothole or something. You come around. down Old Colony Avenue, was that? No, I go around the. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, you told me that. You come down Day Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. Day Boulevard. I circumnavigate. It's yeah. in the water. You try to get some more distance. I am Take you a little longer. Distance. Yeah, and it's prettier. <laughs> but, prettier, yeah. But we hit, uh, hit some kind of a something, something caused it to go flat. Six miles on a flat tire. Probably ruined the, probably ruined the rim. Yeah, oh, no. But I made the hearing. You made the hearing. <laughs> we are impressed. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we're going to call to order our second hearing of the night, an 8 o'clock hearing upon the uh, application of, of Philip Joe Henning, who I see is with us from 23 Parkwood Drive, Milton, dated March 14 on file with the board. The applicant is appealing the Milton Building Commissioner Joseph Prondack's findings dated March 2. Dated March 2, 2018, following an inspection at Thayer Nursery on February 15. The Board of Appeals had requested that the Building Commissioner complete an inspection of Thayer Nursery for compliance with the provisions of the special permit that was issued to Thayer Nursery by the Planning Board on July 14, 2016. Thayer Nursery is located at 270 Hillside Street and is located in both a Residence A and a Residence AA zoning district. All of this is set forth in the application on file with the board and open to public inspect and inspection. My name is Jeffrey Mullen. I'll be acting as a chairman tonight. With me are Nicholas Gray to my left and Virginia Donahue King to my right, both members of the Board of Appeals. You just bear with me while we, we read some, I read some prelim, prelim, preliminaries. The, um, 
what I have on the file is, uh, is the applica official application by Mr. Joe Henning, dated March the 14th. I also have um, some email correspondence, which I don't know if I want to read, or maybe I'll just wait for the Building Commissioner's testimony and to hear your application, um, unless, you'd, unless you'd prefer that I read it. I, I don't think it's necessary. Okay, let me just explain to those watching at home and the people who are here, this is a little bit of an unusual hearing. We, don't, we do a lot of hearings, but we don't do hearings like this. This began with, a, with a, an email from Mr. Joe Henning dated November 15, compliance at the Thayer Nursery site that he sent to the building commissioner regarding strict compliance with the terms of the special permit. There were several specific allegations uh, and requests for follow-up regarding exterior lights and inventorying Thayer's vehicles, et cetera. Um, uh, we, we discussed that. We requ as, the, as the advertisement indicated, we requested that the commissioner follow up. The commissioner did follow up in, a, in an email dated March 2, uh, to which Mr. Joe Henning has appealed, which is why we're here. So um, I hope that that's an accurate summary. If it's not, I'll ask the, the applicant and the building commissioner to correct me. So uh, just to move it along, I, we have that. I also have... Um, I have a couple of emails that I'd like to read. In, oh, let, let, me, let me tell you what else we've got. We've got, a, um, we've got an order here by the Board of Appeals indicating, uh, requesting that the building commissioner do the inspection that followed from the initial complaint that was lodged to the commissioner and then it was appealed to the board following the November uh, 15 uh, hearing that 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 order was signed by the Board of Appeals on January 14. Since then, we have reconstituted the board, of, and and, and uh, I was on the prior board. I'm on this board, and Mr. Gray and Ms. Donahue King have joined me, and Mr. Leonard and Mr. Daber have. I think they've retired. Um, I also want to read a, a couple of uh, letters that we got in for the record. I'm going to ask Mr. Joe Henning to present his uh, his application. This is, a, this is an email by John Cronin that came in today to Mrs. Fitzgerald, to the Board of Appeals. Tonight hearing, tonight's hearing has been advertised. It seems a bit unusual. It is a continuation of a prolonged dispute this neighbor has mounted against a pre-existing landscape nursery business. Before Thayer Nursery, it was Roger Thayer's greenhouse and nursery, probably back to at least 1900, where Miltonians purchased poinsettias and annuals. The 1966 year of founding Thayer Nursery, I built Wendell Park House, which Bob Oldfield landscaped. In 1968, I became the Milton Town Administrator and a responsibility to employ and supervise the building commissioners, five over 34 years. Tonight's hearing raises questions of nitpicking, harassment, and selective enforcement. Is the building commission forced to wink at or overlook expired permits or questionable or non-compliant nursery, mulch, firewood, or landscaping operations. It is difficult to conduct these businesses in Milton. It is great when the Board of Appeals applies common sense decisions. The Planning Board and several Board of Appeals panels deserve commendation for their patience and diligence on this matter, John Cronin. So I just acknowledge Could that- I make a comment? Should we let me, let me just- No. Should we go through what no, the I'm issues the are? Me, no, I, I know that, but this is this is outrageous. It, it, I feel like it's a personal attack on me when I haven't even had the opportunity to talk about what are the issues here. And he is not talking about the issues. He's talking. He's the chairman. You, you'll have your chance to speak. Let me put the case in. This is outrageous. Uh, this is how we do every case. Okay, every single case. The public that, is here to speak later. I, I'm I'm happy to have them. Every case that we do. Yeah. We present what we've got in they the file. They speak after. Yeah. Okay, let me just finish, okay? I'm, I'm going to conduct it the way that I've been asked to. I've learned how to conduct it, and, and you can object if you'd like, but let me just have my time. I, I, so noted. So noted. Um, so we have that. We also have a letter from Mr. Manning, Mr. Joseph Manning, uh, R.E. Thayer Nursery. I'm a small family-owned businessman in Milton. Had 250 cows on the property. It was challenging to maintain cordial relations with neighbors. It is also difficult for building commissioners to referee complaints. It is important for the Board of Appeals to understand the plight of small businesses in Milton. M. Joseph Mann. Okay, so that's what we have in the hearing, in the file. 
Now, Mr. Johanny, welcome to the Board of Appeals. How may we help you? <clears throat> I'm not asking for help. I'm asking for fairness and justice. That's what I'm asking for. Um, if anyone here has read uh, the uh, special permit, what it says is that um, the requirements must be met in order for the business, and it's a commercial business, it's not a farm, and that was a decision that was made by the Zoning Board of Appeals years ago. And, and what Mr. Leonard said at that time was that because the majority of the revenue came from the landscaping and wood distribution businesses, it was not a farm protected by um, the Dover Amendment. So that decision has already been made. With respect to Mr. Um, uh, uh, Cronin's letter, he, he almost insinuates that this is a pre-existing non-conforming business. That is not the truth. Uh, okay. and, and so we need to make those points clear. Fair enough. Now, in order for any special permit to be, uh, let's say, legally issued, um, we, we all know at the table that it must, uh, let's say, preserve the residential character of the neighborhood. If, if the neighborhood is residential, the business cannot interfere with the residential character of the neighborhood. And so what Mr. Whiteside was trying to do when he wrote this was to show that if they uh, uh, obeyed the conditions that were placed, strictly obeyed, then the business would be, uh, let's say, acceptable or it would not interfere with the residential character of the neighborhood. So under the town bylaws and under the laws of the Commonwealth, any properly issued uh, special permit requires that there, there be no, let's say, material interference with the character of the neighborhood. And so I, I guess I would say, um, from what I can see, that there must be strict adherence. I can read uh, the portions of the special permit, but I'm going to spare you that. Um, but one thing Mr. Whiteside wrote was, and, and let me repeat also that um, myself, um, my husband John Rowe, uh, Maggie Oldfield, Josh Oldfield, attended these planning board hearings for more than a year. When this, this special permit was completed, it represented the combined efforts of other neighbors and abutters, the old fields themselves. It was a very long, drawn out process. But I guess I would say that though I disagree, um, you know, we must say that, that there was certainly a respectful process. Um, what uh, the, the final uh, let's say paragraph that, that I, I'm interested in says, the planning board determines that these standards, including the specific standards and requirements imposed by the zoning in subsection N will be met if there is strict compliance with the terms, conditions, limitations, and requirements specified in this special permit. There shall be no material changes to operation site features or addition of site features without amendment of the special permit. So it's very clear that uh, the requirements of the special permit must be met specifically, like there can't be any deviation. So um, if we go to uh, my complaints and, and Mr. Prondex's um, uh, responses, it says, um, Mr. Prondex says, Thayer has agreed to keep all lights off until such time as they are able to acquire replacement lighting compliant with the terms of the special permit. I find no violation here. Okay. The special permit says, applicants shall direct exterior lights downward and install covers to shield them such that the lamps shall not be visible off-site. Light levels shall be kept as low as reasonably practical. Um, it also says the lighting plan is shown on sheet five of the site plan. Lighting will be installed as shown on the site plan. Number one, I've never seen uh, uh, sheet five. Do you have a copy of sheet five? I believe I do. I don't think I have it with me necessarily, okay. but it does exist. So I guess my, my comment on this would be that um, 
the option of turning the lights off is not given. The requirement of the special permit is they shall direct exterior lights downward and install covers. That's it. There is no other option here. Okay. So number three. Um, you want to speak to number two? Or do no, I, I don't. I'm in agreement with Mr. Okay. Uh, Rondack okay. on number two. Okay. No, that's good. Um, it says... Um, it states... <clears throat> for those in attendance, uh, number two had to do with the inventory of Thais vehicles. Proceed, Mr. Giovanni. Okay. Um, it states that insofar as the law allows, backup alarms shall be disabled. OSHA does not require uh, backup alarms for equipment that operates on construction sites. It does allow for alarms to be turned off on other sites provided the operator uses a spotter. Okay. Now, what does the special permit say? The special permit says, to the extent legally possible, backup alarms on bobcats and trucks will be deactivated or set at the lowest sound level possible. This does not give anyone the right to make an alteration. The old field sat at, this, at, at the table downstairs, and this was agreed to. And so, um, Mr. Prondack agrees in his response that um, you can disable backup alarms. He says it's legally possible. OSHA allows it. And the planning board said, to the extent legally possible, backup alarms on bob bobcats and trucks will be deactivated. And so there's no question. It is legally possible, and they shall be deactivated. And that has not been done. Mr. Prondek does not have the right to make alterations to the special permit. It has to be strictly complied with. Okay, let's go to number five. And he says... Number four? I'm, I'm fine with okay. number four. Okay, so it's, we're, we're, number four dealt with um, trucks delivering bulk quantities of firewood. So we're, we're, we're here tonight to talk, speak to numbers one, three, and five in your initial complaint. Is that and um, the, uh, the comments that Mr. Prondack made at the bottom. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, so, so proceed. So two of the Thayer, uh, Thayer dump trucks have had their beds lined with rubber matting. I inspected these trucks. Rubber matting exists and is in sufficiently good shape. I have asked Thayer for a copy of the invoice uh, on that matting to determine if it was the same or equal to the specified product, specified product in the special permit. So what does the special permit say? The special permit says applicants dump trucks, dump trucks, it doesn't specify two, it doesn't specify three, it specifies all. It says, applicants dump trucks will be lined with sport floor stamina performance rubber flooring to prevent excess noise during loading. What is my complaint initially about? My, my initial complaint to Mr. Prondek was excessive noise. And that excessive noise was being caused by um, wood being dropped into uh, trucks. And so uh, that was the, that was the uh, initial problem that I mentioned to him. The noise is excessive for a residential neighborhood. That's how I see it. So Mr. Prondack didn't have the right to say um, that uh, two is enough when the planning board said dump trucks all. So why dump, am I- How many dump trucks are at the site? Five. Five, okay. So what, what is the concern here? The concern here is, um, is enforceability. Like, um, if Mr. Prondack is driving down the street and he sees a truck full of wood, uh, is he required to get the license plate to make sure that's one of the two? When um, Mr. Uh, Whiteside wrote this, it was clear that he was going for enforceability, enforcement, the ability to simply enforce and so I guess I would say Mr. Prondack does not have the right to make a change to the special permit that the old fields, John and I, worked on for over a year. Okay? Now, um, finally, um, he says, uh, in, I, I believe that I spoke with Mr. Prondack on the phone about my concern um, about after a year or after a season, how much material was actually 
delivered and sold. Because in the special permit, there were specific um, quantities specified, okay? They were, they were specified in the special permit. And the reason for that specification was there had to be a limit to the 2012 level because that's what was referred to in the bylaw, the zoning bylaw amendment that was passed by town meeting. So town meeting um, passed a bylaw amendment that specified that the 2012 level would be considered, let's say, the maximum. So I, I spoke with Mr. Prondek, I believe, that's what I recall, and I asked him, how do these quantities compare? And he says, uh, in addition to your request, I have asked there for additional documents on the following. And he, uh, he talks about a list of the number of employees, which is limited by the special permit, a list of volumes of bulk materials delivered to the site and sold between May 9th and uh, year end, consistent with the format in the list uh, in the special permit. Uh, provide a statement of the amount of firewood sold in cords uh, between a specific date range. Provide an invoice showing the type of lining used for the beds of the firework wood delivery trucks. He says, Thayer has not provided the requested information. And so I have never received an email um, from Mr. Prondack uh, indicating that, uh, that, these, uh, that he ever received this information. Now, in the special permit, it says... Excuse me, are you amending your complaint right now? Those issues about which you mentioned, which were the subject of Mr. Prondack's reply, were not part of your original appeal. Mm. Therefore, I, I don't... Are we, I'm amending it. Okay, well, we're not going to hear that tonight. I'm, I'm going to let you speak, okay. but we're not going to rule on that because we haven't been through the process, which I is required be, by I want to be clear. Law and the because let me this just finish was, my point. I understand. Let me just finish my point. I don't know how you can because I haven't finished my point. I know what you're saying. I mean, I'll finish my point, okay? okay. Um, and my point is, is that the process requires you, you to appeal it. We have the building commissioner evaluate it. He'll do that, and then we'll be back, which we'll have to do. I'm going to give you the opportunity to speak, but I want to just make it clear that we can't rule on that tonight. Fine. That's perfectly okay. Um, it says in the special permit, the building commissioner, and I think there was a discussion about this um, in, the, in the last um, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting that I attended, and so I, I, I wanted to make this point whether or not you're going to rule on it. And, and what it says is, the building commissioner and or his designee shall have the right to inspect and have copied with redacted proprietary information the record specified below during the normal hours of operation at the sales office. Failure to grant such access shall be a material violation of this special permit. A material violation, okay? So um, the, the information that their they're, review of required records is the section, and it talks about employee lists, um, the, the amount of material delivered and sold, um, uh, ice and snow removal operations, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, current list of vehicles. So um, what I'll say, whether you're ruling on it or not, is the failure to provide this information is a material violation of this special permit. Fair enough. I okay. indicated we won't rule on that. We'll indicate to the building commissioner that that, that is a matter that you can address to the building commissioner, and if you, if you so choose to appeal it to the Board of Appeals, we'll consider it in accordance with the general law. Okay. Um, fair enough. So uh, let me just summarize what I think we've heard, which is that the complaint that was initially uh, submitted on November 15, which we heard in January, and, and which we referred to the building commissioner, and to which he responded on March 2nd, there were five initial issues, there are now three, uh, issue number one being the lighting, issue number two being the backup alarms, and issue number three being the number of duck, uh, dump trucks uh, which have their uh, beds lined with rubber matting as per the special permit. Fair enough? Yep. And part of your su supplemental uh, point was that Mr. Prondack had requested information regarding the type of rubber matting in the truck uh, uh, to make sure that it was in compliance with the kinds that were required under the special permit. So that's a little bit of a different category than the, the, the other issues regarding the number of employees, et cetera. 
So I just want to get that on the record so that I understand what we're, what we're doing. <clears throat> let me ask, um, well, let me first ask if there's any uh, clarification questions from my colleagues of the, um, <coughs> Mr. Joe Henning. One thing I'd, I'd just like to say is I, I believe that we can talk about um, some of these issues because the last um, piece of Mr. Prondack's letter says that Thayer had not provided the requested information along with the list above. Um, he asked Thayer while performing the inspection to provide a log of off-schedule deliveries. This log was unavailable at the time. These, all, all, mm, these issues all, will also be cited. So those have been cited. Um, I don't know if they've um, come forth with that information or not, but it, it kind of does appear to me that we can talk about some of that anyway. Let's hear from the commissioner on, on, on that at the right, at the appropriate time, which will be in just a second. M Mr. Gray. Um, I don't think I have any questions at this point except to ask, maybe it's a question for Ms. Oldfield when she comes up, whether the other three dump trucks that don't have the rubber are taking wood deliveries or not. Fair enough. Okay. Yep. Um, I guess the point uh, that I, I made was, though, the ability to enforce. So whether or not they carry wood, it, it makes it very difficult to enforce if we have to say, uh, if we have to play the shell game of uh, two of five. And so the issue is the ability to enforce. The other thing I'll ask, though I'm sure that uh, my, my request won't be granted, having been through this before, I would appreciate it if um, you could ask uh, members of the public to, who speak um, initially, what do they know about the special permit? And um, what do they know about Mr. Prondek's enforcement efforts? I'm not asking that they not speak. What I'd like to make sure of is that we understand what is relevant testimony and what is not relevant testimony. So I have not said that um, Thayer Nursery isn't a wonderful place. I have not said that they're not great people. I have not said any of that. So uh, to, to go through those kinds of uh, testimonies just uh, prolongs the whole evening. Um, if there's something truly relevant truly relevant having to do with the special permit, um, Mr. Prondack's enforcement efforts, uh, that would be great. And I'm glad to hear anything else, but I, I think it's important to separate the relevant from the irrelevant in terms of public testimony. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll, I'm gonna make a ruling on that uh, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the uh, initial round of testimony. I, I, have a, I have an opinion on that and I appreciate your point. Mr. Mr. Prondack, do you, uh, would, would you care to, uh, address the board now in terms of uh, the conduct of your review and its conclusions. I would. Thank you. Joe Brondack, Building Commissioner. Um, I would like to uh, go on the record though with uh, uh, a couple of points. Um, in, in the former appeal, um, it was my opinion that the appeal was not appropriately be before the board because the generality of it was that Mr. Johanning was simply asking for me to do inspections on, that I had intended to do on his schedule as opposed to one that I had set out. And I don't think that prior appeal was properly before the board. You've put that as water under the dam at this point. Heard that the already. Bridge. Um, I also believe that this appeal is not properly before the board because in uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 15, it says that upon application, the appellant must state the substance of the appeal. And in this case, he did not do that. He just said, I'm appealing everything. Um, and again, just for the record. Um, and then I would like to comment on the special permit. And I agree with Mr. Johanning that the special permit itself does uh, state that there shall be strict compliance in whatever section. I'm sure Mr. Johanning could uh, say that. But I would also like to point out that in section 10 of the special permit, spe section 10 is complaint access and review of required records. Um, it talks about complaints. And there are two, either uh, director butters can complain uh, directly to Thea Nursery, and if they do, they have a they have an obligation to cure the violation. It states that right in the special permit, and it also states that butters and others can complain to the building inspector under the normal complaint procedure and violations to be cured. So while it does ask for strict compliance, it also, in some respects, anticipates that there are going to be violations. Uh, Mr. Leonard, in one of the many hearings on Th Thea Nursery, uh, stated stated very correctly. The town cannot micromanage their nursery. And I think as 
all the effort that went into uh, all the the effort on all on, from all parties that went into crafting this special special permit, um, you can't get every single detail right. Um, so I would almost suggest that that perhaps. Uh, just as a, as a suggestion, uh, that it's time that this issue be remanded back to the planning board for clarification, because this process itself is 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 kind of crazy. That one board writes a special permit, they spend all this time on it, and then when there's confusion on it, it goes to another board who was not involved with the crafting of the permit. So that's a matter for town meeting. Uh, understood. Uh, but I just felt that I should go on the record with that. Um, as far as um, the so noted the specific complaints. Um, Thayer has agreed to keep all lights off until such time as they are able to acquire the replacement lighting. Um, I believe that's in, in compliance with the special permit. It does talk about uh, light levels shall be kept as low as practicable. Well, if the lights are off all the time, then lights are, light levels are, are kept as low as practical. Um, and if they, if they turn the lights on, without having the proper shielding or without being the proper fixtures, then that in itself is a violation. But if there are no lights and there are no lights on, um, then I, I, I believe they're in compliance. That's my opinion. Um, as far as the bobcats are concerned, and again, I stated this at the last hearing, um, Mr. Joe Henning brought up this exact issue to me in August of 2017. I responded back then. I don't believe that matter is properly before the board because he had 30 days to appeal that, and he chose not to. Um, I will say this about bobcats. Um, if their nursery were strictly a nursery and didn't operate a landscape business, and these bobcats did not go from operating on the nursery site to or then operating on construction sites where they are required to have backup alarms, if that didn't happen, um, I would no, have no problem saying, Thayer Nursery, you have to shut off your backup alarms and use a spotter. Um, but in this particular, in this, it's recognized throughout this whole special permit process that the nursery's bobcats do both. They operate on the nursery and they operate on construction sites where they are required to have backup beepers. I've been in this business, I've been in the construction business a long, long time. And I How many years? Uh, 40 to be exact, 30 as a building inspector. Um, From my view, from where I sit, with the tragedies I've seen over the years, ordering the, the, the possibility of someone getting seriously hurt or killed by shutting off backup alarms and then not turning them back on when they're required to be, I understand that would be the responsibility of their nursery. Uh, personally, I'm not going to be, that, that, to me, that's akin to uh, telling someone to turn off their smoke detectors in their house. It's that dangerous. Um, so. I, I think that the planning board should relook at that condition and instead of saying insofar as the law allows or to the extent the law allows, in other words, we're not sure what the law says, but let's see if we can do it, um, and to lay that on the building commissioner uh, is inappropriate. Um, so um, I would go so far as to say that I will be reluctant at any point to order backup alarms turned off on bobcats that do get used on construction sites because people can get killed and seriously hurt. Um, and that's, that's my opinion by, on, on that matter. Um, and then as to the, the, uh, the bed liners, um, again, I think this is something that needs to be further clarified by the planning board. Um, uh, it, it's, it's been widely known, I, I think, my opinion, I've watched, I've, I was not present for all the hearings, I've watched a number of the tapes, I've talked to a number of the parties involved. It's been widely recognized that they are always used two dump trucks for their uh, firewood delivery, and I do believe that the lining of the of, of uh, two tr dump trucks with um, the rubber flooring um, is compliant with the permit. Uh, but again, I think clarification on that should, if, if, if the planning board meant five, then it should be the planning board uh, stating that it, it is in fact five. Um, and when you when you speak to this point, is this is the uh, provision uh, in paragraph? Uh, I don't know the, the the main paragraph, but paragraph P three on page sixteen, regarding the sport floor stamina performance rubber flooring. Correct. Okay. Um, do you want to speak to uh, the additional points that you made in your reply email on March second? I, I I do, and. Um, 
So they have provided a list. Uh, part of my inspection is, is uh, an inspection program that I, I am required to develop um, now that the special permit is in effect. Um, so these are some of the things that I would have looked at in, in uh, periodically or intend to look at periodically. So they did provide a list of employees. I find that that's consistent with the requirement of the special permit. Um, I did uh, let, sorry, they've provided that to you since March 2nd. Um, I'm sorry, that is, that is correct. So I did, I, did, uh, I did make the old fields aware that um, they needed to provide that list, a list of the employees, a list of the bulk materials delivered and sold, um, statement of firewood sold in cords, uh, and an invoice on the, so I asked for these four things. Um, when I wrote the response to Mr. Johenning, uh, I, I, I was then, I was not able to dedicate all of my time of that following week toward this issue, and I, I, I did notify Thayer that I needed these things. Within that week, they did send me some responses on some of this, and then the appeal was filed, and the appeal was filed in general. So I, I've kind of stopped. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, moving forward on any of this. Well, I, as I said, I don't think we're going to rule on it. I, I agree with uh, Mrs. King that we can hear uh, issues on that, and we've heard testimony from Mrs. Jo Mr. Joe Henning. Mr. Joe Henning knows his rights of appeal, and we can follow the process on that if you'd like to. But it's, it's, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with getting some facts on the table, and mm -hmm. I think you should follow up in due course and consistent with your duties as the building commissioner of the town of Milton. And, and in, in part of uh, Ms. Ofield's response, there was a question, which again, I think needs to be clarified by the planning board. Um, delivered and sold are, are two different um, um, verbs. Two different um, verbs. operations, verbs, yes. Yeah, verbs, yeah. Um, so delivered, you know, we have, a, we have a nursery there that operates and, and uses mulch uh, throughout the nursery all over the property, I've seen it. Um, so did the planning board intend to get um, I, I think clarification is needed there. Uh, you know, um, the amount that is delivered and sold, um, I think, I, I almost, I think what Maggie was asking is, isn't sold, doesn't that satisfy what? Well, perhaps everything that is delivered is sold, but not everything that's sold is delivered. It would Correct. seem to me that that would be the case. Um, but. Um, it, regardless, that's not what the hearing is about. This hearing tonight is about backup yes. alarms, lights, and lined dumper, dump trucks. Um, and I think that's the record. I, I think that, um, I think these are, these are important issues to follow up on, mm -hmm. and I, I invite you to do that, and you've heard the testimony of Mr. Joe Henning. Questions on that? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Commissioner, you all set? I'm all set, okay. thank you. Could, could, I, uh, could I make Let just Let me just ask two, my colleagues. Sure. I, 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 uh, so let me just ask my colleagues if they've got questions of the building commissioner, if they've any, anything they want to add on the hearing at this point. I don't think so. Mr. Joe Henning. Oh. Okay. Um, with respect to uh, what Mr. Prondek said about um, the, the appeal procedure, I have the right to appeal to Maggie and Josh themselves, or I always have the right to appeal to the building inspector. So yes. Additionally, I don't need to be aware of his schedule. If I make a complaint, he has to investigate. So if he intended to do it at some future time, it's not as if I'm pushing him. I have the right, and I took the right. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. And, and, and finally, um, what it says in the special permit is that Maggie is required, Maggie and Josh are required to have these records in the business office. They're required. It's not as if you have to make a, an appointment or you have to notify them in advance. What it says clearly in the special permit is these records will be available at any time for the building inspector or his designee. Fair enough, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Oh yeah, we're gonna uh, move the hearing to uh, the point where we'll, we'll take testimony from the public. And uh, Mr. Joe Henning has made a request that I uh, request that the um, members, uh, that the people who speak indicate that their knowledge uh, about the special permit and the level of review that the building commissioner has put into this hearing. I think that's an accurate summary. I'm not gonna do that uh, because I'm not gonna stifle your voices as citizens of Milton. I would simply remind you that that's what he said. If you want to, if you want to offer that, we're happy to hear that. If you've got something else, 
that you'd like to share with the board, we'll hear that as well. I think that's the spirit of the, the way the Board of Appeals has uh, conducted its business in, in my time in this town, and we're going to do that tonight. I will ask, uh, I'll note that it's 8.30, and uh, I see many people in the audience, and, and I'd ask that you uh, be, and I know you will, um, be uh, concise and as brief as possible, and try not to repeat what other people have said, but we do want to hear your voices. They're important to us. It's an important matter for the town. We've invested a lot of time. You've invested a lot of time. The old fields have uh, invested a lot of time, and as has um, Mr. Joe Henning and Mr. Rowe and, and certainly the building commissioner. So let me, uh, let me see if there's anybody who wishes to speak in favor or, or, or on this matter, uh, on this matter, not in favor or, or opposed. Uh, see if Mrs. Mrs. Old, Ms. Oldfield wants to speak first, and she's more than welcome but I'm not gonna require that you speak. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, 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 Mrs. McKetrick. Ms. McKetrick, welcome to the Board of Appeals. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm here representing Thayer Nursery. I'm not gonna speak at length. I just welcome. wanna make a couple of comments, really just to, to emphasize what's already been said by the building inspector. Um, the procedure, when there's a complaint, either to the building inspector or to Thayer, is that there's notice and there's an opportunity to cure. And that's what's been described here. The building inspector did an inspection. He noted certain pieces of information were missing. And Thayer has responded with the missing information. I know you're not hearing that tonight, but I want to make it clear that that happened, and that happened quickly. There were questions it's as to whether that was it sufficient. Right. Let me just, it, it, it's, it, it's important, though, because we're trying to follow the procedure that's in the special permit and that's in the bylaws and that's, that's in the general laws. We've, we're really trying to do that. Thayer is trying to do it. I'm trying to help them. Um, there's really little else you can do but to follow this procedure step by step. Whatever the complaint is, respond to it. Find out if the building inspector is satisfied. If the, if the complainant isn't satisfied, there's an, there's an appeal option. Um, I, I think Thayer has tried to do that. And we may be back again if there are other complaints. We have to just continue to follow this procedure. As far as the specific three issues that you're addressing tonight, I just wanted to make a couple of comments on the bed, truck bed issue in the special permit. The truck bed is, um, was required for the trucks used to deliver wood. Thayer uses two trucks to deliver wood, and they've had the beds in the trucks for a great, for at least since January 2017 or before, because the building inspector inspected the trucks then, I was representing Thayer then, and the building inspector was satisfied that the proper material was in the truck beds. As far as the lighting issue goes, I've been aware of that since I first um, began working with Thayer around October 2016. Um, the issue was that the, these lights are old, and there is no shielding that you can purchase for them. So Thayer immediately had to decide, could they afford to buy new lights, or were they just going to turn all the lights off? Their solution has been to turn them off. They have not been able to buy new lights. At some time in the future, they may be able to. I believe that addresses the requirements in the permit for lighting. Um, and I've forgotten what the third issue was. I'm sorry, but those are my Third issue is the backup alarms. The backup alarms. I can only defer to the building commissioner on that. I don't know much about construction uh, safety requirements, um, but it, it does appear to be a safety issue. Um, if it needs clarification, perhaps it could be clarified when this does go back to the board of the planning board. But Fair enough. On the initial point, that was the point I was making. I, I, I just don't want to stifle the conversation to the extent that we we uh, we, uh, we, we you know we were volunteer board that uh, you know is a small town and we're trying to hear all the voices. So, but I agree with you on that need to comply with the strict rules of procedure. So, thank you, Ms. McKetrick. It's good to see you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak on the application? Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Name and address, please. Sure. Paul Krasinski, 5 Stonehill Lane. Um, so first off, I want to applaud the public forum and the process. I think one of the things that the Hillside Neighborhood Association is known for is open communication, transparency, and a willingness to have conversation around issues like this. Um, this has not been the case here, and I have actually read all of the documentation and I have looked at uh, Mr. Prondack's uh, feedback as well. And I'm here to discuss something that's very important to all of us, which is our home values. So I want to start there. So I think 
on, uh, even though the resident considered my commentary possibly irrelevant, which I find is rigid and insulting both to our intelligence and our ability to understand how this impacts our home values inside the Hot Hillside Neighborhood Association. I think the Hillside Neighborhood Association represents the history of Milton and Massachusetts and how people have conducted themselves in a very open, diplomatic way. You know, you may remember that a couple years back we had an issue of development in our town and I think the rallying of the Hillside Neighborhood Association, neighbors, people, interested parties, I applauded the neighbors, Mr. Hamilton, and ultimately we came to a resolution. In preparation for the meeting tonight, I read on a 2014 article in the Boston Globe that stated, you know, we are not here to put the old fields out of business. Four years later, we're still talking about this issue. One thing we prided ourselves on in the Hillside Neighborhood Communication or community and neighborhood is the ability to make progress, come to a resolution, and everyone goes back to how they're living. Today, however, I think that you know we have an issue, um, and as a result, we should be aware that home values inside the Hillside Neighborhood Association and across Milton have been accretive across the board. So all of us are increasing home values. This issue, independently, is challenging those home values for not only myself, my family, all of the 100 plus families inside the Hillside Neighborhood Association. And again, I think it's going to bubble over to all residents in Milton. This impacts our home values. We need to remember that there are gems and assets like Thayer Nursery that make this place a very special town to live in. Maybe you don't agree with that, but Money Magazine called us one of the top five places in America to live. It's places like this. It is people like the Oldfields, families like my family, and the hundred other families inside of the Hillside Neighborhood Association. But what was really disturbing to me is that this issue has been handled in a very different manner. It's been lawsuits, social media campaigns, obfuscated communication, hiding behind documents, it's time that we come and we resolve this problem. It has been a minimum of four years and it has gone on far too long. So I think, one, we should understand that this gentleman, a resident, is not stating and should not represent how the rest of the Hillside Neighborhood Association feels about their nursery, its value to the town, its donations to the community, and an integral part of both an intangible and physical asset. So tonight, we're talking about lights, rubber bed lining and trucks, and other what I will call tactical details. However, I'm convinced we're missing the big picture. This is about our home values. This is about not Maggie and Josh as business owners. This is all of us as residents. And I would hate to see there be a material adverse change in my neighborhood to my home value and for all of the families. It may be their single largest investment that they make in their entire lives. This is what's at stake here. It does not have to do with backup lights, rubber linings, and otherwise. So I have several questions that I think all of the neighbors have a right to have answered before any hearing and decision is made. One, what is the actual motivation for this four-year complaint and issue? Why has this not been resolved? Did this gentleman not know that he was a budding fair nursery that was an operating business, that as the economy grows, everything grows a little bit? It's part of the compromise that we deal with. And finally, I'd like to caution all neighbors and all of residents in Milton that this issue is not an H&A issue. This is a Milton issue that impacts all of our home values. If we were to lose or put at risk this family and this operation, we will see the complexion change. And more importantly, the value of the Hillside Neighborhood Association um, and neighborhood change dramatically. And I would say for the worse. So finally, I'm here to show my support to the Oldfield family as people, as operating one of the gems in the Milton community, and as donors who are integrally involved in this town. And so I suggest and recommend strongly that if people are open to communication, if they want to hold open dialogue, neighbors want to have that, but we certainly don't want to be 
having people hide behind documents, social media threats, or any other methodology that impacts our home values. And while I will not speak for the 100 families or more in the Hillside Neighborhood Association, I think it's important that you hear clearly that this is a larger issue than rubber beds where I believe the Oldfields have bent over backwards to make considerations and concessions, and it's time to compromise and it's time to resolve this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. K-R-A-S-I-N-S-K-I. -S and I, I'm open to having a cup of coffee. With First name? First name? Paul. Thank you, Mr. Krasinski. A Thank anybody you. else wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. <coughs> welcome to the board. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Jason Benzikin. I live on Hillside Street. Spell that, Jason. B as in boy, E-N as in Nancy, Z-A-K-E-N. I'm president of the Hillside Neighborhood Association. I will speak on behalf of the neighbor, neighbors in the association. Their nursery is viewed by the neighborhood as an institution in the neighborhood. The Old Fields are a long established family in the neighborhood. They are, res they are our neighbors, their families are our neighbors, and they're viewed that way by the rest of the neighborhood. Their nursery has an incredible role in the neighborhood. Uh, it's something that's considered beautiful by many people. People have relationships with the members of the Old Field family and with the nursery itself and it is supported by the neighborhood. We want this board to understand that some of the complaints being raised here do not reflect the sentiments of the neighborhood at large. The neighborhood does not view Thayer Nursery by any means as a nuisance, quite the opposite. I'm speaking very briefly only now um, because I think it's important that you hear that the neighborhood does support them. The neighborhood has not gone through the specific complaints being raised here by Mr. Hennings. The, sure. appeal, the appeal was viewed as uh, the appeal was very general. We felt that you should hear a general comment from the neighborhood on our support overall for Thank theater. you very much. Anybody else wish you to be heard? <laughs> yeah. We'll limit the clapping, please, if, if that's okay. Oh, so I don't get a clap then? You can, we'll give you a <laughs> uh, My name's Catherine Ellis. I live on 30 Barbary Lane with my husband, Robert, and we have two young children. I was really delighted to hear the commissioner is concerned about safety because that's one of the things in our neighborhood that I've, we pride ourselves on is safety, so backup beeping is fine by me. Um, we've lived in the neighborhood for 15 years in my professional capacity. I'm the director of economic development for the city of Newton, and if we don't protect our small businesses, we're going to be out of luck very soon with Amazon. So I'm very passionate about how much Thayer Nursery has given back, just like Paul said, and, and since 15 years, in the neighborhood, we've never had an issue like this, so this has festered for the last five or six years. I've had to call the police on two occasions because Mr. Joe Henning's husband stood in front of my car and risked the safety of my children because I signed a petition in support of the nursery. So this has been going on. The police have got all the logs. I just wanted to end. As a taxpayer, I'm very concerned how much time you're spending going out to the neighborhood, your colleagues are spending. The police have told me several times that there's constant logs. Um, for complaints, and I feel my tax rate keeps going up, and I know that we're, as a city employee, the more work there is, it, it just doesn't even out. We, we prevent our kids' bullying school. The bullying that's been going on in our neighborhood for the last six years is cringeworthy, and I just hope it stops. Thank you very Thank much, you. Ms. Ellis. Anybody else? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Sarah Koval. It's K-O-V-E-L. I live at 51 Forest Street. Um, I can probably compared to a lot of the people here, we're relatively new in the neighborhood. We've been here in the neighborhood for about three years or so. Uh, we have three small oh, children. I don't have to wait to speak. Somebody here. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in Milton longer, but we um, yes. moved to the neighborhood. It's a basically because it's a beautiful, charming neighborhood, and we have three small children, and that's where we want to raise our family. Um, Maggie and her family have been very welcoming. Um, you know, if we're going to speak to the um, character of the neighborhood, I feel as though they represent the character of the neighborhood. Trees, beautiful. I mean, as the previous speaker um, touched on, the, de the development just since we've been there has been astounding, not to mention the, the paving, which I know is a whole other issue. Um, so with that being said, 
Maggie and her family have been very gracious to let me bring my two twin three-year-old boys and my five-year-old daughter to ride their bikes in their parking lot because our street's no longer um, safe to ride our bikes on because of the, vo the volume of the traffic and the speed. So they've been very gracious. So yes, I agree that the backup um, beeps are important. Um, and also, you know, if we're here to talk about noise and concerns of that nature, my concern as a homeowner in this neighborhood um, is, of course, this is a place where I want to raise my family and I wanted to retain the character that it has. But also, I'm concerned, what if, God forbid, this continued campaign goes on and on and on to the point where they can no longer maintain their business and it gets, you know, bought out by another developer and it becomes a humongous construction site for the next X number of years. So that's, that's my concern um, as a resident of that neighborhood. But, you know, above and beyond that, we are in support of the neighbor of, of the nursery. They've been fantastic neighbors um, and just very warm and welcoming. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, bending over backwards for neighbors, we have been there a short time and she's done that for us several times already. So Fair enough. That's all I have thank you say. very much. Anybody else? No, Mr. Johan, you've had your chance. Well, I'll, I'm going to let you speak at the end, okay? But let's hear from the neighbors who've been waiting. Welcome to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, my name is Carol Stalker. I've lived at 291 Hillside Street for 40 years. Um, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm one of the founders of the Hillside Neighborhood Association. Um, this situation is, is, in the 40 years I've been in the neighborhood, is, is very peculiar and unprecedented and not normal. And I really do not understand what is going on with Mr. Johanning's complaints. And one reason is because I live across the street from um, their nursery and have for 40 years. And I have never had a problem with, too, with excessive noise. I have never had a problem with excessive lights. I have never had a problem. So um, I don't understand what his motivation is, frankly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, how are you? Uh, Kelly Lawrence, L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E. I live at 627 Harlan Street. So I am actually in the butter as well. Um, I grew up in this town. We moved back to Milton. My husband did not grow here, grow up here, but you know, you grow up in Milton, you wanna stay in Milton. It's so charming and lovely. And we love to walk down the street, go through the nursery. It has such a warm feel. I'm really disappointed about the lights because we can't, we tried to buy our Christmas tree at night and Maggie said, I'm sorry, the, you know, the lights are off. I'm like, this, you know, this, this really stinks. I mean, to just be, blunt about it. I understand that um, that they have to change the lights and that's it, but how are they financially going to be able to make these upgrades when, when they're having a really difficult time? I mean, listen, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It's just, I try and stay out of things and um, in the sense that can we not, why do we have to go to court for everything? Can we not just talk to our neighbors, you know? If I have an issue, I talk to Maggie and Josh and we handle it that way. This has just gone on so long and there's just so much negative energy and this is not what we want. And what I really don't want is for these nice families not to be able to afford their business. I also come from a family business and it's just not right. And I don't know exactly why they moved there if they didn't see what was, what was behind them. And I also do worry about what is the ulterior motive because if they go and this becomes, you know, a house next to a house next to a house, my property value is gone. I mean, this is, this does affect all of us and it's just, it's sad that it's gotten to the point where we have to come at 8 o'clock at night. 8.55. 8.55. And, um, and hire babysitters so that we can because we have a neighbor that just doesn't see it the way that everybody else sees it. So I, I hope things change. Thank you, you know? Ms. Lawrence. Anybody else? Yes, in the back. <clears throat> Welcome. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Heidi Graf. I live on Atherton. Two Fs. One. G-R-A-F. G-R-A-F. I'm just going to address the, um, very simply, the Steffi elephant. Steffi Graf. I'm sorry? Like Steffi Graf. Oh, her mother's name is Heidi. Really? <laughs> just... I'm not her mother. <laughs> That's um, not anything about that in so this hearing, is it? <laughs> I want to talk about the elephant in the room. And that is, if you move next to a, a school, they're going to have a playground. And the children are going to be loud. <clears throat> if you move next to a fire station, there's going to be fire trucks. And they're going to be loud. If you move next to a nursery, the nursery makes noise. You have to buy a property doing your own due diligence and know what is around your property and what you're buying into. But to buy in to a property next to, I'm sorry, I'm so nervous, I'm so mad. Okay, relax. Um, <laughs> take, take your to, time. To buy take a time. property next to a school and then start bringing lawsuits against the school because the kids are too loud is ridiculous. And I'm not going to say any more. Thank you, Ms. Graff. Anybody else wish to be heard tonight? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Joanne Manning Peterson, and I just wanted to support uh, the Oldfield family. And I agree um, with Heidi or Stephanie that um, you know you, when you move somewhere, you know where you're going. And I just feel like the Oldfields have gone above and beyond and really tried hard to accommodate all of the special permit conditions. And they're a great asset to the town. I don't live in the Hillside area, but I live in Milton. And um, I just always think of, of Hillside as a beautiful area, especially because of their nursery. And I just hope that this can um, uh, finish up or be completed or resolved as quickly as possible, because I just feel like it's gone on and on, and it's been an impact to the business, to the family. And um, I, just, I just hope that they can um, become good neighbors at some point and, and make things the way they should. Fair enough. Thank you. Ms. Manning-Peterson. 150 Wendell Park. Thank you, Ms. Manning-Peterson. Yes, anybody else wishing to be heard? Anybody in the audience? Yes. Jennifer Balboni, 44 Forest. Balboni. Balboni. Mm -hmm. I am not in a butter, but am close on the same side. Um, we bought the house, house two years ago, and, and to your point, um, I drove through that neighborhood extensively to hear what the noise was going to be like, so I knew what I was getting into. Um, it's not noisy. Um, and to your point to, about unplugging backup cameras or, or backup um, alarms. alarms, that's absolutely a safety issue. Um, I think that would be outrageous to unplug them. Uh, people are at risk. Um, the Oldfields have been nothing but um, gracious and kind neighbors. I don't hear any excessive noise. Um, I have reviewed the complaints. And I think, again, to the point of this is a small business in, in Milton, I think we need to be supportive of them and not micromanage some of the uh, pieces of this agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Malboni. Anybody else wishing to be heard? OK. Uh, Mr. Joe Henning, I told you you'd have uh, the last word. Yeah. Mr. Joe Henning, welcome back. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think what we're talking about are the bylaws of the town, the agreement that was negotiated by the old fields and the planning board over a period of time, the requirements of the special permit that require strict enforcement. Um, to answer uh, some of the unjust comments, uh, uh, that were made about me. Uh, honestly, I don't know any of the people in this room. Uh, you know, uh, you none of them, <laughs> none of them. Okay, all right, all right. Well, we have, let's, well, uh, no, no, we, we, no, we gave you a chance to speak. No, okay, okay. We shouldn't have, he shouldn't have the last word. Yeah. If, if I have a lot of yeah. questions that should be Did, answered. It impacts my financial okay. impact I, my I, family. He's welcome to come to my home. And have a discussion. We're going to have one hearing. Yeah. Okay, we're going to speak to the chair. Okay, so Mr. Joe Henning. Okay. Um, the reason why I don't know them is because they have never been concerned about the impact of the nursery on me and my property value. The thing none of them ever asked me was what due diligence I went through before I bought my home. 
John and I spoke with Mr. Crawford, Mr. Prondack's predecessor. Mr. Crawford assured us that the nursery was simply a nursery, that there was no commercial activity going on. And that's what we were told. And so uh, based on Mr. Crawford's input, we bought our home. We didn't just go there one time, we went there repeatedly. We didn't hear any noise, we didn't experience anything like that until after we had moved in. Um, but based on Mr. Crawford's, um, the discussion we had with Mr. Crawford, uh, that's what we understood. Additionally, there are bylaws in the town. And, and we are a nation of laws, I ha have to assume. So I have to assume that the laws mean something. And what I will simply say is that there were two judges in Norfolk County Superior Court who found in the favor of John and I after the ZBA had uh, stated that the uh, commercial activity on the property of Thayer Nursery was excessive for a lot of that size. And so a cease and desist order was issued and then there were later appeals to Superior Court. So, um, you know, finally, um, what Mrs. Ellis had mentioned, um, the police uh, never uh, charged John. Uh, they did not find uh, that, they did not find in Mrs. Ellis's favor. Uh, there have not been repeated police visits except for Mrs., uh, Mrs. Ellis's call to the police. Um, so, you know, John and I have been law-abiding citizens complying with the bylaws of the town 100%. Uh, we moved to our home uh, after checking with the uh, building commissioner of the town. So uh, I, I, I find um, that uh, people uh, group together and, and, uh, and uh, reach conclusions without checking all sides of the issue. And if anyone wishes to come to my home, uh, they're welcome. Yeah, that's gracious okay. of attention. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Krasinski, you asked to speak. Yeah, I think, um, sorry, um, and sorry for interrupting. I apologize. I think the question stands is, what is the issue and what is the outcome that this neighbor would like to have as a resolution. I think starting there, to me this sounds like a four-year campaign that should have been settled long ago. I agree it is actually a large drain on the cost and time and financial dues for all of us. So I'd like to understand what is the issue, how do we resolve it in a reasonable time frame, and or is this just really going to be a fight about rubber beds lights and unplugging backup, which I think we have a much larger issue if that's the problem. So sure, first, I'd like to say, what is the issue? Mm -hmm. And second is, what is, it, what is a successful outcome for this neighbor? I'll speak to that. Yep. Anybody else wish to be heard? I'm gonna close the evidentiary portion of the hearing. Yes, um, Ms. Lawrence, just uh, speak, address the sorry. microphone. Uh, just on that note, I'm just curious, if he should not be suing the previous homeowner instead of the nursery due to the fact that he lied about what was going on. So that would save all of us time, and that's all I have to say. Oh. Okay, uh, any, any other comments from my colleagues at this stage before we close the evidence? Okay, we're gonna close the evidence. We're gonna rule on this right now, okay? Um, and uh, I'm going to, uh, take my prerogative as the acting chair. And I know John Leonard is, is watching, so I'm nervous. Uh, but um, <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do is thank people for coming out on a, on a rainy night. So many people here, and it's not typical for a board to have this kind of participation. It speaks to the quality of the neighborhood, the quality of the people, uh, and the importance of this um, um, matter. And, and that goes for Mr. Joe Henning, who we, whom we've hosted many times and we've seen at the board often and of course the work of the commission. Um, there's been a lot of testimony on process, procedure, motivation, level of due diligence, where this is going. The board's not gonna answer any of that. We're in a adjudicatory hearing, we're in a adjudicatory hearing on three specific matters. Our powers 
vested in us by the town bylaws are limited. I think, I think every comment I've heard is, uh, is a fair uh, a point to be raised and counterpoints were raised and it's all worthy of dialogue and discussion and many of the things that both parties seek. But our role here isn't to adjudicate that tonight. And I'm very familiar with the procedure in this hearing, uh, in this matter, because we've sat on dozens of, of hearings in this. And uh, our job is to hear the matter that's before us and try to make a ruling as best we can on the facts that are in front of us, not to uh, mediate or arbitrate a dispute that's well beyond the specific scope of the matter that's in front of us. To Mrs. McKetrick's point and the point that I was trying to make, while there are several matters that are outstanding, this hearing is limited to three, and that is the presence or absence of the covers on the lights as required by the special permit, the, uh, the, the, um, the ability to deactivate the backup alarms and the rubber bed lighting, lining in the, uh, in, the, in the dump trucks. And that's it. Now, I wanted to hear everybody's point of view because I'm a believer in process. And I think that's healthy and good. It makes people, uh, 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 it's important to hear people's point of view. I heard Mr. Joe Henning invite people uh, to his home. I think that's a gracious offer. I'd invite people to follow up on that. I know that the president of the Hillside Neighborhood Association is here. I think that's important. I, we know a lot about your neighborhood. We know how important and, and how historic your neighborhood is and how strong it is. And perhaps those can be resolved outside of the Board of Appeals Forum or in the Norfolk Superior Court or in the Land Court or but it, it, uh, it's, uh, the matters in front of the Board of Appeals are limited, and uh, I'd like to and need to um, limit the, my comments and my, um, our comments to those. Um, let me say um, three other things, and I, and I, and I want to get to the substance of it. The first is, I do, think the, um, I do think the special permit requires strict compliance. It says so. Um, and it's... Um, in some respects, it's, it's a 26-page document. It's, it's been in existence for a couple of years. It's been much litigated and much discussed. The fact that we're talking about three matters is a testament to its strength um, and its detail. So hats off to Mr. Um, I think there's been testimony that Mr. Whiteside wrote it. So hats off to his diligence and the, and the planning board's diligence in putting it together in the year-long process it took, um, as painful as I know that was. Um, I also want to address the fact that this, uh, the potential of remanding this matter to the planning board, I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. The town, the, the town of Milton, uh, the town meeting has required that the Board of Appeals enforce the appeals to the, to the, uh, of the special permit that's issued by the planning board. It's a little bit unusual. That's what the legislative body decided to do. That's our duty. That we will do that. To the extent that uh, the building commissioner, the town administrator, the board of selectmen, or the planning board itself including the town planner, wish to take a look at either the special bylaw on landscaping business or this particular special permit for the purposes of amending it, clarifying it, making it clearer, sharper, I invite them to do that. That could be a good process, but it's not the Board of Appeals role to remand the matter to the planning board. It suggests that they were derelict in their duty in the first instance, and that's the furthest thing that I would want people to think. I think they did a terrific job with what they had to work with in a difficult circumstance. And while, um, you know, if you operate under the 100% law, perhaps there's uh, not 100% uh, perfection, but that's not the, that's not the, uh, that's not the standard. So um, I just think for the record, it, it, that's important. And then the last thing I want to say is um, I, 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 um, I take to heart the building commission is a point about not micromanaging Thayer Nursery. That's not the town's role. The town's role and the town uh, uh, building commissioner is, is charged with enforcing this and every other bylaw for the benefit of Mr. Joe Henning and every other citizen of the town of Milton. I think that's important. I say that not just as a member of the board <coughs> of appeals, but a member of uh, a citizen of the town and somebody who's, who uh, is proud to, to be a citizen. Now, so that's, that's not all I have to say, but those are my introductory <coughs> Inter introductory comments respectfully offered on this matter. Um, 
on the substance of it, um, I hear Mr. Joe Henning um, on, on the matters, but I'm, uh, I'm inclined to support the building commissioner, uh, in, in a, and I wanna, we're gonna have a debate with our colleagues, but I'll, I'll, I'll speaking as the chair on all three matters. Um, the fact that the, there are not available light covers for an out-of-model light uh, seems to me a reasonable uh, 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 accommodation that the lights be turned off since the purpose is to not have uh, light covers, it's to shield the, the, the glare from the lights. So, so long as the lights continue to be off until the, sh until the covers are available or are replaced by similarly situated lights, which I think was the testimony of the building commissioner, and as indicated in his report, it seems to me there has been compliance with that requirement. On the rubber bed lighting, uh, uh, lining, I don't think there's any way to read the special permit other than it's only the trucks that receive the wood that, require, that are required to be li lined. It's not a fair reading because uh, the rubber bed lining is in the, and I think Mr. Gray alluded to that in his question, the rubber bed lining uh, requirement uh, is in the wood delivery section of the, of the, of the permit. And uh, provided that it is, it is true, and I believe that there is testimony to this effect that there are only two of the five trucks um, listed on the inventory that receive wood, it seems to me there's compliance with that as well. Um, now, I will grant that I think that may pre present difficult enforcement issues, but in this case, it seems like there's compliance, and that's what we're charged with doing. Strict compliance, indeed. Um, with the last issue, um, I, I wanna, this is a, a little bit more difficult, uh, but uh, the bylaw, I mean, I'm sorry, the special permit says, to the extent legally possible, backup alarms of bobcats and trucks will be deactivated or set at the lowest sound level possible. Now, the planning board is not uh, OSHA, it's not a safety commissioner, it's not the, uh, it, it, it's not the, 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 uh, um, the final ruling with regard to safety compliance, but that, that's what it says. Mr. Prondack's testimony, uh, which, he, which he alluded to, but I, I wanna read it. The new permit indicates that all activity, uh, let me say, the forward only traffic pattern is not a condition of the new special permit. We didn't talk about that, but that was not objected to. But what that is alluding to is one way to avoid the use of backup alarms is to have a forward only pattern. I believe that an earlier permit or at one time a permit in this property had a forward only requirement which was then re removed in, in this uh, amendment. So um, that's, a, I believe that's what that's referring to. This new permit indicates that all activities are regulated by it. It does state insofar as the law allows, backup alarms shall be disabled. Accurate statement. Um, OSHA does require backup alarms for equipment that operates on construction sites. It does allow for alarms to be turned off on other sites provided the operator uses a spotter. Whereas this equipment operates on both types of sites, I will not be directing Thea to turn off its backup alarms. The consequence of an error, human or otherwise, can result in death, serious injury, and this is the sole reason for my decision, italicized for clarity. You couldn't see the italics, but I'll represent to you that those were italicized. Um, so th this is where the, the board needs to exercise its judgment, and it, in my view, the judgment comes down on the part of safety. And uh, the, the confidence that I have in the 40 years of experience of the building commission, or 30 of which is in building <coughs> inspection, and I don't feel capable or confident to overrule that ruling when faced with a choice. In other words, the testimony is that while OSHA does permit the disabling of alarms, which would, in accordance with the special permit, be to the extent legally possible, backup alarms could be, I think it's nebulous and, and sufficiently gray given the fact that there are multiple activities on the same site and when faced with that with the with the representation by our building commissioner I'm not I'm not comfortable as a member of the Board of Appeals in overruling that when safety is such an important issue in light of the testimony um, if there were other testimony that came to light you know perhaps that would be important but at this point I, I rule, I, I believe that the board is compelled to rule on the side of safety. And that, that's my position on the, on the three matters that are in front of us. Um, with respect to the remaining matters, as I indicated during the preliminary portion of the hearing, I don't think the, while we can discuss those, I don't think the board's been asked to rule on it. And given the way that we've been handling these matters as uh, narrowly tailing, ta tailoring our decisions, um, that would be the way that I would be uh, Le leaning towards uh, ruling on 
the matters in front of us. Uh, Mr. Gray, would you like to wish to be heard? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you, Mr. Mellon, for your introductory comments, which I second wholeheartedly. We're really here for three things only, which is to rule whether the three points in dispute by the uh, building by the parties about whether the building inspector has uh, his findings in this email are accurate or not, um, or are compliant with the special permit or not. That's the only thing before us tonight, um, the only thing that we can rule on. And with respect to each one, if the lights are off, they are not committing light pollution, which is the point of the the element in the special permit. Therefore, I find I would rule that the uh, lights being off moots the issue of whether the shields are there or not. It's moot. They're off. They're not on. If they were on, there'd be a violation. If they're not on, then there's no violation because the light is as low as possible. I can't find any basis to overturn the building inspector's judgment on that on the basis of the fact that the lights are now off. If they're off, they're off. They're not causing a problem. Secondly, um, if the testimony concerning the dump trucks is that the, the ones involved in the delivery of wood have the rubber lining, that, seemed, and the, that is the section that the, of the special permit dealing with those dump trucks. The fact that those are the ones that have the rubber lining in the bed seems to me, again, to be compliant with what the intent of that special permit was, which was to deaden the sound of wood falling into a dump truck, which I know can be quite loud. Um, so I, would, I can't find a basis for overturning the uh, building inspector on his finding on that. With respect to the, th the uh, point number three, which is the middle one, which I just skipped over, concerning the backup alarms, uh, I would second your comments. That if in where the language is slightly ambiguous, we need to come down on the side of safety. I would merely point out my thinking that it says, uh, what, to the extent legally possible. Uh, I would argue, to, to my thinking, the fact that this equipment operates both on nursery site and on construction site, and when it's on a construction site, it's legally required to have that backup thing making noise. I think it's definitely uh, arguable that, that the, the fact that they're on all the time is compliant with the bylaw because it's, to the extent legally possible for this, this particular equipment, the way it's being used, the way it was designed for the special permit, it needs, it, it would be reckless to have the, the, the alarm shut off. So I would tend to, I don't really find a basis for overturning the building inspector's ruling on this and would tend to support him. Ms. King. Well, I'm not in total agreement. Fine. But that doesn't matter because, you, because we would need three to overrule. My only difference is, and while I, I certainly am very concerned about safety, I'm also concerned that um, having backup alarms disabled, I'm sure was a, a large part of the, the negotiation process. Having not sat through it, I don't know that, but I'm pretty sure about it. Um, I think that had that not been given, there perhaps would have been other concessions that the neighbors would have liked to have in order to um, accommodate their um, hardship with being you know, one of the few a butters that's actually next door to the nursery. So on, on that, I, um, I disagree with my colleagues and otherwise I do agree with them. Fair enough. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, let's say uh, all in favor of, uh, of, of uh, upholding the building commissioners, bear with me, we don't do this often. Uh, building commission is ruling on the appeal of Mr. Joe Henning, uh, uh, say aye. aye. I, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> I, wait, 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 are we going to? We're doing the whole appeal, or should we do each point individually? I, I think we should do the whole appeal, and, okay. and, and Jeannie can can weigh in uh, with her objection fine. noted right. for the so, record. So, fine. Uh, it, 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 up, up, upholding Mr. Prondack's ruling with respect to Mr. Joe Henning's appeal, as presented to the Board of Appeals in light of the testimony. Vote aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. It, we'll, note, we'll note for the record that M Mrs. King's objection on the basis of the backup alarms. So let me, um, let me close this hearing by um, uh, making two comments. The first is I invite the building commissioner to have a conversation with the town planner about the specifics of, this, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the permit and the bylaw, and that's worthy. Uh, and I'm going to make three comments. I'm going to make a comment to everybody here thanking them again and following up on the, on the, the conversations and, and continuing the dialogue with the board 
the board does not mean uh, to, to uh, dissuade you in any way from proceeding with that when we focus solely on the three matters that are in front of us. That's the point that we're trying to make. And the third point is um, uh, we'll, we will issue a written decision. Mr. Johanning, you have your rights in accordance with, with that decision to appeal. Um, and we'll address that in the, in the bylaw as well. And if you could work with Mrs. Fitzgerald to get a copy of that and uh, be so notified, uh, we'd appreciate that. Okay. So thank you very much all for coming out. Uh, this, this matter is adjourned. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.